Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space. 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 And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Story number one. The Conqueror, written by Adept Bubbles. I am an oracle. I serve only the royal court and the emperor himself. Ayat, ruler of the heavens. The will of the divine, the final king, the chosen one. Though his subjects know him by one title, the Conqueror. I peer into the weave, untangling the strands of fate. I see what has happened and what will happen. I see the destinies of all. Some choose to accept their fate, some reject it. Fate does not care. It is indifferent. None can escape it. My emperor approaches me. I see in my mind's eye the strands of fate flowing from him. They are many, each shining brightly with his future. He speaks to me. Oracle, I seek conquest. The strands grow brighter. My spy masters come to me with news of a new race, a new subjects. They call themselves humans. The great fleet is ready. We will conquer. My mind's eye navigates the weave, untangling the possibilities. Would you like to hear your fate? I asked him. Yes! At his command, I dive into the weave. I follow the strands to their sources, uncovering the truth. Your fate is now written. Your battles will be glorious. Victory is assured. About my emperor, and he turns to leave. As fate wills it, he says. The strands grow brighter. It is not long after the beginning of the war. As was written, victory is assured. The humans are no match for the conqueror and his great fleet. As the battle rages, I reach out. I see the strands spread out in front of me. They point to only one conclusion. One of the strands flicker. The war has lasted longer than most, and my emperor addresses me. The humans are great warriors. Our battles are truly glorious. Soon we will be victorious, and they will make for stronger subjects. I ask him again. Would you like to hear your fate? Yes. I open my mind's eye. I see the strands clearly. There are fewer of them now, an almost imperceptible difference. The path is still clear, I reply. Victory is assured. The war has turned. My emperor is losing ground. For every world he takes, two of our own fall. He approaches me once again, hanging his head low in exhaustion. I seek your counsel, Lorigal. Once again... I ask him the same question I always have. Would you like to hear your fate? Yes. Again, I reach into the weave, and again, the strands of fate lead me to the same answer. Victory is assured, I tell him. His expression darkens. Do not lie to me, Oracle. I see only the truth, I tell him. The weave does not lie. You would reject fate. Realization crosses his face, and his anger vanishes. No, I would not. I apologize. As he turns to leave, I see a strand attached to him flicker and disappear. The Conqueror's final stand. The humans had pushed back our armies all the way to the seat of the Empire's power. My Emperor and his most trusted advisors were gathered he addresses me in front of his advisors, shouting, and the sounds of battle could be heard outside the chambers. Please, he says. Would you like to hear your fate? Yes. There were only a handful of strands attached to him now, each one dim and faint. They pointed to the same conclusion they always had. Your victory is assured. Your fate is inevitable. How can that be? He shouted. They are knocking on the palace gates. My grand army has been overrun. A loud crash could be heard at the entrance of the chambers, and then a bright flash. The war had been lost. My emperor and his advisors captured. The great fleet destroyed. His armies overrun. An alien approaches me. 
The other guys tell me that you can see the future, it says. I reply, I am an oracle. I peer into the weave, untangling the strands of fate. I see what has happened and what will happen. I see the destinies of all. Huh. I ask it a question. The same question I asked my emperor all those times. Would you like to hear your fate? The alien sat silent for a moment before answering, No! All around me, I could see through my mind's eye the strands that connected this alien to the weave flicker and die, one after another. In their place, new strands began to take form, far more than I could count, and all woven into a tangle far too complex to ever hope to unravel. They all glowed with an intensity that I had never seen before. We make our own fate. End of story. Story number two. The job written by Chijinta. Jason blinked as he stared around at the pale off-white walls that seemed to glow from within. He was strapped down, naked in a warm, smooth metal chair. He gave a moment to glance at the tiny, soft body, gray, that stood in front of him, now before turning back to glance about the room. If the little bastards wanted to probe him, there wasn't much he could do to stop them after all. Galatoreptem Valtteri, yin yin ucha. Glancing back at the little dude, Jason frowned. Yeah, that didn't translate well. Uh, can you try that again? He asked. For its part, the great turned its head and seemed to focus on something outside of Jason's line of sight before it turned back to him. I apologize. The translator seems to be distorted. It was my attempting to translate into all 7,000 languages on your planet at once. I'm unaware if you can communicate across several languages, but please keep the cross speed to a minimum to reduce translation contamination. The Grey explained as Jason blinked and almost laughed. That might be a little problematic, he said. Now the small alien's look, he sighed before continuing. English uh, is an amalgam language. Uh, we tended to bludgeon other languages over the head in dark alleys and shake them down for loose adverbs at night. He explained before shrugging in his seat, but um, I can promise to try my best. The alien blinked once more before nodding. That would be acceptable. We are here on a time-sensitive issue and would like to request your assistance. A uh, top tip for you, knocking someone out, kidnapping them, strapping them naked to a chair is a, a rather poor way to ask for help. Most of those actions are actually crimes, he said with a sigh before there was a flash of light and Jason found himself back in his living room, fully clothed with a short tumbler of sipping whiskey over ice in his hand. He stared across at the little man now sitting on the lazy boy that he'd gotten for cheap when his friend's uncle had died in it. Apologies, but we anticipated that you'd be less than helpful if we teleported into your house at night. Our simulation AI predicted an 83% chance of lead poisoning becoming our primary cause of death in such an event. Any other form of contact would have likely been laughed off as a prank or a joke of some sort and dismissed out of hand. We could not allow that to happen. We are on a mission of grave importance. Thinking the situation over, Jason had to agree that they seemed to have a pretty good idea of his responses. So he took a sip of the whiskey and sighed. Fine. What's so important that you had to wake me up and drag me out of my sleep to help you with? The greet of Ash, the Grey said, cocking his head to the side for a moment before continuing. The Devourer, it is consuming our planet. We beg of you to help us. The Grey said with a bow of its bulbous head. Jason blinked and took another sip, and as he tried to think through what was happening, I don't know what you heard, but I'm pretty sure that you got the wrong guy, he said, before setting the drink aside and sighing again. What is this uh, devourer, and why me? When we searched your databases, you were found to have the best in-context title to our needs. As for the Devourer, it is a fiendish flora that has overrun our homes and is consuming the lifeblood of our planets. It was first brought to our home as an exotic plant from your world, but we were not aware of the damage that it would cause. Reaching over, Jason picked up a glass once again. Do you know what it's called? He questioned as he closed his eyes and prayed to any higher deity that might hear him that it wasn't what he thought it was. Katsu. Draining the glass. Jason set it back on the side table and tried not to scream. All right, 
Looks like I'm on the job. Let me get my stuff. Forcing himself to his feet, Jason headed for the garage. On the side of a faded gray pickup truck was printed a rather cheesy image of a madly grinning man swinging a weed eater as he sat astride a red and white rocket. Beneath it, in tightly printed words, was the advertisement, Jason Tanner, Galactic Groundkeepers Incorporated. End of story. The algorithm reckons you should be watching this video next, and I recommend that you should be always watching my video. So, click it and click. With energy! And yes, clicking that does help the channel. Thank you very much. I just want to give a quick thanks to the tier 5 patrons and channel members. Alithia, Barky, Feudic Yol, Cam Maxwell, Casper Onholtz, White Band 420, Lord Asrakal, Arcalian, and Oakfield.